All right, so we got a battery from XZNY. So this is a 100 amp hour, 24 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. Let's open it up. Okay, so we got uh, terminal bolts. Looks like M8s. We got some short ones and we got long ones. Our owner's manual, user's manual. It says rated capacity of 200 amp hours in here. I think that's wrong. Uh, you can connect two in series and assume four in parallel. You can continuously charge at 120 amps and max continuous discharge at 120 amps. Now, something interesting, this looks smaller than most 24 volt 100 amp hour batteries. This is not far off from a 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. Look at the size, it's real close. Somehow, how did they do this? They sure did pack a lot into this battery. It's uh, ever so slightly taller, ever so slightly longer, just slightly thicker here. So not much difference. So it's gonna be interesting tearing into this thing because we, yes, we are going to crack it open to see how they got that much capacity in that case. Well, let's go ahead and just charge it up and then we'll do a capacity test. All right, so we did charge this battery up with this Victron Smart Solar Charge Controller. And uh, we are in float mode. So that means that we've gone through the full charging cycle we put in 1.28 kilowatts, and so that is uh, approximately half of the rated capacity of the battery. So this battery came to us at a 50% state of charge. So now we're gonna set this up to do a capacity test. All right, so we've got the shunt hooked up to the battery. We've got my 24 volt reliable inverter, and we've got the air conditioner connected as the load. So the time lapse is recording here. Let's go ahead and turn on the inverter. And then we'll go ahead and turn on the air conditioner. Okay, so we're pulling uh, 750 watts, 28 amps. So I've got the AC on the medium setting. And it looks like we've settled in around 800 watts, about 30 amps. Should take us roughly three hours. All right, I'll be back when it completes. Okay, so I just came out here and took a look and it was down to like around 18%. And then I came over here and I turned down the AC. I had it on medium. I turned it to low because I wanted to extend the discharge test out a little bit longer. And then shortly thereafter, I heard the uh, inverter start screaming and everything shut down. So I think the BMS shut down. So let's see if we can wake him back up. Looks like we're back. So it was definitely a little strange. I, I don't know why it uh, why it shut down. It killed my shunt, so I, I lost everything here. So I'm gonna have to go back and look at the time lapse and see where we ended up at. I was originally I was pulling 40 amps, and then I lowered it down, and we got down to like 21 amps, and then we shut down. We got to 82.642 amp hours. 82.642 amp hours, 2,130 watt hours, 18%. All right, so let's restart this, I guess. We'll start to shun out at 18%. Unfortunately, I can only set it to 20, I think. All right, well, let's try. I don't know why it shut down, but let's try this again. All right, so the compressor came back on on the air conditioner so we're climbing back up I'm doing 28 amps right now I went ahead and set it back to medium I don't know why that would matter if I set it from medium to low and actually started pulling less power why would the battery why would the BMS shut off all right well I'm gonna let this continue on and I'll be back when it either completes or shuts down again all 
All right, so I'm starting to see the uh, voltage start to fall. We restarted the shunt at 80%, so it put 80, 80 amp hours back on here, and we have discharged 14.5 amp hours since. And when this is, when this gets down to 21 or 20 volts, we'll shut the test off. I'm gonna have to go back in and look at the time lapse the last one before the battery shut down to see where see where we stopped at and then calculate the two so we should be getting pretty close to the inverter complaining there it is all right so i just turned the ac off turn the inverter off so minus the 80 that we started here. So we got 17.565 amp hours. So let me go back into the previous time lapse and find out where we stopped. So we stopped at 82.642 amp hours. We barely made it. <laughs> Can you see that? So calculating where we stopped at at the 82.642 and then adding the uh, 17565, give us 100.207 amp hours. <laughs> All right, so it passes the capacity test, but it shut down in the middle of our test. There's no explanation as to why it shut down, so that's kind of a failure. I wonder if it's possible they have some kind of cycle range enforcement. So it says state of charge range 20 to 100%. And when the battery shut down, it was around 20%. It's got me wondering now, are they enforcing that range? Let's open this thing up. See how hard this is going to be. All right, yeah, so I already opened it up. So clearly we've got prismatic cells. There seems to be four stacked on their sides on this side and then four stacked on their sides on this side. So basically a 12 volt and a 12 volt and then linked together with this, what is this, an eight gauge or six? Yeah, it's a six gauge silicone high temperature wire. And then we've got six gauge. We got a garbage truck behind me. Okay, now that the truck left my back behind my house, we can continue on. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there's a, a six gauge cable that goes to the positive. Then there are one, two, three, four, five, I uh, believe 12 gauge that goes to the negative from the BMS. And while we were waiting for the truck to leave from behind my house, I did take a picture of the top of the cells because I you can see right there, the QR code. I took a picture of it on my tablet and I blew it up, but I can see that these are the GFB cells. So these are good trusted cells. These are used in a lot of the server rack batteries. The other thing I'm noticing too, I think I see a temperature sensor right here and not just a thermal switch. So it's possible that this has low temperature protection. Wouldn't that be awesome? And then underneath the this fish tape is the BMS. Let's see if we can peel this off and see anything. And there's the label of the BMS. It doesn't really have a brand or anything. I do see where it says 100 amp. So it's a 100 amp 8S BMS. Let's test this thermal sensor and see if it has low temperature protection. All right, so it looks like we're putting in 640 watts, about 23 amps. Let's try to freeze this guy. Look at that. We do have low temperature protection on this battery. That is awesome. Look, and it warmed back up. We're back to charging. Let's do that once more. And again we have low temp protection. Awesome. There's really not much else to see in there. The, it does not have welded bus bars. The bus bars 
they're aluminum and there's bolts you can see there's a, a bolt in each one so they're just cells bound together bolted together on the bus bars I think I do see some fiberboard in between the bottoms of the, these cells here so everything looks pretty kosher the only thing that uh, to me that's uh, iffy about this battery is the fact that it shut down at around 18% in our in our test we were able to get it going again and it completed a capacity test and it did uh, pull full capacity but I'm not quite sure I've never had a battery shut down around 18 20 percent all right guys so I think that's going to be the end of the video I may end up doing a follow-up and testing this one a little bit more and I would like to hear back from the manufacturer if they've got any kind of explanation as to why the battery shut down is it heating is it some kind of enforced cycle bandwidth or something like that <laughs> or is it just maybe a faulty BMS I'm not sure we probably will revisit this battery but for now that's going to be it and i'll catch you guys on the next one